Good morning Minecraft and welcome to today's modded Minecraft tutorial and today I'm going to be working on a system that I was using in my Attack of the B-Team series. It's a thermal expansion automated ore processing system for scaled mining. Uh, scaled mining I'm referring to things like quarries or large groups of people just dumping ores into a chest. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so here is a laid out sample of what I have built in our, this is a kind of a flow chart of what I've built in my Attack of the B-Team series. I've got uh, pulverizers and redstone furnaces feeding into a final chest at the end. But before I dive into this, I thought I would go ahead and explain some of the basics of thermal ex these two thermal expansion machines, uh, the pulverizers and the redstone furnaces. So let's head down here. Okay, let's go ahead and just grab a stack of iron to uh, check out the pulverizer. And uh, the pulverizer is a uh, highly configurable machine. Um, you can set it up with different redstone settings, redstone controls. Uh, here's a fuel uh, power monitor. Some quick little tips about it. And this allows you to configure all the inputs and outputs. But the iron ore is going to crush into this pulverized iron or dust, depending on which mods you have installed. And what you're going to get is you're going to get twice as much ore out of it, and you're also going to get a byproduct, uh, in this case, a ferrous metal. Um, now, I'm not sure of the exact percentages. I think it's 10% or less, usually, for ores. So I'm going to sit back, and I'm going to let this process, and I'm going to see exactly how much ferrous ore we get out of the one stack of iron ore. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Okay, it looks like that's almost done. One more piece of ore. And it looks like for the entire block, entire stack of iron ore, I got five ferrous metal. Of course, you got twice as much pulverized iron, but there's, there is some extra bonus material that you get for it. So for a lot of systems, if you build them more complicated than a simple pulverizer and a furnace, then uh, you're going to need to figure out some way to deal with the, uh, the extra bonus material. Um, here's one way you could do it. You could possibly uh, set up two furnaces, and one of these furnaces accepts um, one of these furnaces will accept the iron ore, and the other one will accept the ferrous metal. So let's go grab another piece of material. Let's try, is there tin around? Well, let's grab the lead. I'm pretty sure the lead has a, a bonus material either. Um, the other downside of, or one downside of these machines is they do not pull directly from a chest. So I have an input over here that says that it's coming from the left-hand side. So I've got this in the chest, but it's not actually putting it into the pulverizer. So I have to, you have to find some other way to get it from the chest to the pulverizer. And even the thermal expansion chests do not do, not do that. You still have to have another means to pull it out of the chest. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But this one is actually processing the materials and sending them over to this chest. Um, how you configure that is this primary output, this primary dust is going to be the red square. And this bonus material is going to be the yellow square. And in fact, you can actually configure it to have one that actually outputs to both. Uh, that would be an orange square, a uh, blending of red and yellow. But for now I have the lead ore going into here and the bonus material coming down here. And let's see, so 
Let's see what we got in our chest. Nothing, because we can't open the chest. There's something above it. That's great. So I'm going to go ahead and let this process and finish, and we'll see what we've got in the results in the chest left behind. So uh, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, this pulverizer is all done. Um, the furnace just finished, and I've got it set up to put its output into the chest below. So uh, let's grab our wrench and see what we've got in the chest. Put that, put that back. Okay, we've got two stacks of lead ingots and uh, 11 pieces of silver. That's actually twice what the iron had for its bonus output, but we did get some bonus output. So for one stack at a time, this isn't so bad. You can put them in here, put a stack in here, and let the furnaces deal with uh, the results left over. Um, early on in the game, this is perfectly fine. But when you start having to deal with um, large scales of ores coming in, um, you're dealing with, say, a Tinker's Construct Hammer, <laughs> and you're just going through the the mine shaft like crazy, or you've got a quarry set up, this really isn't going to work for you. Maybe if you had a setup like this for each and every type of ore that you're going to be processing, this might work, but that could be a lot of machines and a lot of power drawn for fairly early on. Okay, now here's another setup that we could have. We've got three different pulverizers, three different furnaces, and three different types of ore. So let's go ahead and hook these things up. I'm going to put silver in the first one. I'm going to put lead in the second one. And iron ore in the third one. Now these are going to all pulverize their uh, ores up and send the primary ores down into the furnace below. Um, the problem with this is this, this system just doesn't have a means of handling the bonus materials. So they're going to just kind of build up and you're going to have to come along and remove them by hand. Just take them out and stick them in whatever furnace happens to be appropriate. Um, this one is for lead. And this one's going to fill up with uh, ferrous, me ferrous metal and we don't currently have a furnace for that so we're going to have to wait for this one to finish before we move it to the next. But here is my system that I've got uh, devised. This is actually intended for dealing with a small quarry or a, f uh, a decent amount of players. You can all work off of the same chest and the same processing system. So um, I will be back in just a second and explain each of these parts to you. Okay, the first part of my ore processing system is the intake. I have a chest to represent the intake. You can actually use an ender chest here if you want, or any other variety of um, intake or multidimensional transporting system, whatever you want. Um, but what I've got here is just a basic chest full of various ores and materials that this system can take, can process. It can actually handle cobblestone. And we'll see what it produces with the cobblestone here in a little bit. The second part of this is a pulverizing system that, can that should be able to handle all of the ores that are coming out of this chest um, through the pipes and into their own individual um, pulverizers, which they will be processed and sent on to the next step. Okay, for this next part of the system is a pulverized ore handling chest. Uh, the chest could be of various sizes depending on how large and how many pulverizers you have. Right now I just have a simple basic wooden chest here and what it's going to do is it's going to accept all the main, the primary ore, pulverized ores as well as the bonus materials and through this section of this system it's going to sort them out and feed them into the appropriate redstone furnaces. 
And the next section of the system will take the pulverized dust or ores and turn them into ingots and send them on to whatever inventory sorting system you have further on. Uh, this is simply represented by this chest here. Um, next, I'm going to go through each phase in detail and explain how they work. Okay, back to the first phase of the system, the intake. Um, if you have a chest like this, uh, where you're simply dumping items into it, or it's coming from, say, an ender chest, um, you're going to need to connect it to the pulverizers with item ducts. You can use these item ducts, or you can use the more advanced um, energized item ducts, which are going to be uh, glowing yellow, and they're going to be a lot faster but not necessarily better in sorting. They just move items faster. If you've got a longer distance to move them, uh, you might want to go with the faster pipes. But for this system, these basic item ducts work just fine. Now, directly out of the chest, you're going to need uh, a single item duct with a servo installed. Uh, what the servo is going to allow you to do is to uh, set up a redstone control if you wish, or set up any other filtering. Uh, my system currently doesn't have any filtering, um, basically because I know not to stick certain items in here. Um, for instance, wheat, <laughs> a loaf of bread, a piece of steak, um, leather, stuff like that's just not gonna to, going to go through the system. It's just going to clog it up. Um, if you want to set up filters, go right ahead. But I really have the, the servo here for um, the redstone switch. Now you also want to make sure to set the item duct to round robin and what this is going to do is when the uh, the stacks of ores come through here it's not going to attempt to fill up this first one first but it's going to go ahead and spread everything evenly through here. Um, if you do want it to set up or to fill up the first pulverizer before moving on to the second one go ahead and uh, disable the round robin. But okay, so what it's going to do with the stack size set to 64 is it's going to grab the first stack of cobblestone and send it into the first pulverizer. Then it's going to grab the next stack of cobblestone and s send it to the next cobbles next pulverizer, and so on and so forth around in a circle. Okay, let's go ahead and see how I've got the pulverizers set up. I've got the pulverizers set up from left to right so that they receive their inputs from the left and send the outputs to the right. Um, in my Feed the Beast world, I have them stacked on top of each other. So in that, wor in that world, I have them from top to bottom. But this is essentially the same setup. I just thought it was easier to see it from left to right. Okay, once the pulverizers are finished with their products, they're going to send it over to the sorting chest, the next sorting chest, where we have sand and gravel. Now, both of these can be baked in most mod packs. Um, I believe if you have the chisel pack or the chisel mod in your pack, you can actually bake gravel into cement or as asphalt. It's a really nice um, block and I believe at this point it provides a nice little speed boost for you. Now this is actually the most important part of this system that uh, I have devised. Um, what it does is it actually is a buffer between the pulverizers and the furnaces. If you wanted you could have a furnace set up for each and every type of ore and have your pulverizers send those specific ores and their bonus materials to each specific individual uh, furnace. But this system is uh, slightly more intuitive because it creates this buffer and it doesn't you don't have to configure each and every one of these furnaces to have a filter on it. In fact, you really don't even need the servos here, I believe. 
all you need to do is just simply send a redstone signal to these outputs and they should pull from each chest. Um, I like the servos there just in case I'd like to filter something at, at this particular point or that point uh, just in case I'm getting an overflow or something something into my system that I don't like. I like to be able to, to filter it at one point or another. But let's go ahead and start sending these the the now pulverized items onto our furnaces. Now as you can see everything is moving into its uh, associative furnace or a randomly selected furnace and some of the other items are still kind of bouncing around because the sand is trying to go between these two furnaces which is going to keep them filled up. I do have the output set right on that. Yeah, I've got the output. Ah, let me flip these around here. Okay, so the same thing as the pulverizers. I have the furnaces set up. So I have the pulverizers set up from left to right. So the inputs are here on the left and the outputs are being pushed out to the right. Um, these machines actually will push items to the nearest invent or to the inventory in the specified direction. Um, they don't pull from inventories, but they do push it out to an inventory. So I could I could effectively put a chest on this side and it will stick all of its items into that chest. So now that the gravel has been used up, it's now automatically decided that, hey, now we've got an empty slot, let's go ahead and put our gold in there, our gold dust or gold pulverized gold. And this is a new feature to thermal expansion that I haven't seen before. It is a stuffed items buffer, I believe. I don't know the size of the buffer or what it holds, but in the past, in, in previous versions, items like you, this used to bounce around and they would try to go back into the chest and if they couldn't go back into the chest, they would just stay stuck in the pipes, kind of like this sand is doing. But the sand is eventually finding a place to go. And now here at the end, we have there's our concrete that I was telling you about, the baked gravel. So in conclusion, I find this simple system to be fairly versatile and effective for smaller scaled operations, say in a, an initial starting quarry or after you've been mining for a while and you have a chest load of ores and you just don't know what to do with them and you want to cook them off quickly. but you don't want to deal with it by hand. Um, this is what I would suggest constructing as you move into larger scale operations. Um, another nice thing is that it is very modular. You can expand, you can add more of these pulverizers, you can add more buffer chests, and you can definitely add a larger sorting system on the end. So. This is One Wolf. If you guys like this tutorial, definitely hit that like button. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching.